Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson, and I'd like to welcome you to our teaching today. Today, we will begin in chapter 2. Uh, this is our first session in chapter 2, the great letter to the Roman church and to us if we're born again. And uh, I'm just excited to have God's Word right here, my hands able to touch it, my eyes able to see it, and just believe in God that the Holy Spirit today will impart it right into my heart. He's the only one that can. And I uh, just want to uh, say how uh, you know excited I am to have more and more people subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is Curtis Hutchinson. 316, and where all of our teachings and all of our worship uh, service preaching and worship service music is being uploaded right there on that YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. Avail yourself to the whole first chapter of this Romans teaching, and we're about, uh, about to finish uh, chapter 3 in Galatians, or getting pretty close to it on Friday mornings live on my Pastor Curtis uh, Facebook page live on the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, and you can watch through Roku on the channel sermon.net. Just type in Crossway Church when you get the sermon.net channel on your Roku, and you can watch live right there as well. Several avenues for the gospel to go out into the world today, and I'm thankful just to be one of the of the men and women today who's able to share God's Word as it is in truth and righteousness so that it can be believed uh, in that manner and the Holy Spirit can work. And I thank God for that. Uh, we finished chapter 1 in the last session, and I want to back up and just read verses 28 through 32 before we just take right off into chapter 2 because... You know, we need to do that, and we need to always remember uh, the context of what's being said, uh, who it's being said to. In this case, it's not just the church in Rome, but it's all the church. I'm the church. If you're a Christian, by faith in the blood of Jesus, it's to you too. So uh, we need to always remember that. It's like, it's like studying uh, the book of Romans or Galatians, and all of a sudden you forget why it was even written. You forget who it was written to, and you're just now looking at just words. And we need to always remember uh, that as we look at this, it was written to the church. If you're a Christian, by faith in the blood of Jesus alone, then it was written to you today as well. It's the Word of God. Even though it came through Paul, Paul was moved on by the Spirit of God to write what he wrote, and what Paul wrote is equal with all other Scripture. Praise be to God. So let's back up and read verse 28 in chapter 1 as we roll through right into chapter 2 today. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Think about that. God, God turns us over if we don't want Him leading our thinking if we want to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, God turns us over to that way of thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to, which is outside the knowledge of God, outside the Word of God. We want to go our own way. God will turn you over to that. But God says the things that are the consequence of that way are not convenient. You see, God created the earth and the heavens and God put man on the earth and gave the earth to us and God is, is the creator. He's the one with the instructions that He's given us. And when we try to live outside of that, things are going to happen and we're not going to like the consequences because God says though that way is not convenient. The things that happen will not be convenient for you. Most of the suffering, most all of the suffering in the world today is due to people living in sin. That's right. Not all of it. Not all of it. You can look at the story of Job and say, not all of it. But nevertheless, it's all because sin is in the world, whether you're living in sin or not. Most people think sin is just I, you know, uh, smoking, drinking, cussing, gambling, blah, blah, blah. Listen, 
Sin is as simple, God says, as is, is tra breaking the law, transgressing the law. Uh, the Bible says that sin for you and me is when I know to do right and I don't do it. Sin is going against the directions, the instruction, the Word of God. I can put it this way. If my faith is not in the cross of Jesus Christ alone, then whatever my faith is in is a sin. Sin is just going against God's way. And God tells us here, He'll turn those over to that, to a reprobate mind. See, that's what exists outside the knowledge of God is just a reprobate mind. We were all reprobates when we were lost. Living lost, going our own way, even those that seem to have right, upright moral uh, lives, uh, they're, they're lost. So everything they do in the eyes of God is wicked. Even the good things we would look at them and say they do. It's wicked because a wicked tree, which is a lost person, cannot produce any good thing in the eyes of God. So let us never forget that. And if you look over, I believe it's Romans 12. Let's turn over to Romans 12 and, and look at one more thing in our study. What I, I made comment of this. Uh, Paul says in verse 3 of chapter 12, the same letter to the Romans, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, the church, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. What's that mean? How do I think soberly? According to the measure, according as God has dealt to every man, the measure of faith. Paul said the faith we live by in the life we live right now, Galatians 2.20. Right now, I live, if you're a child of God, you better be living by the faith of the Son of God. His faith in which he loved you and gave himself for you. That means faith in the cross, or we're just existing, maintaining, not even maintaining, we're just existing and surviving. Amen. If we're living, it's by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and the cross gave himself for us. That's the measure of faith that was given us at the born again experience. And if we live, <coughs> excuse me, if we live according to that, then our thinking is going to be according to that. Let me let me give you something. May you've heard it before probably. But we live the way we live because we think the way we think. And we think the way we think because we believe what we believe. Believing determines your thinking, and thinking determines your, your life, the way you live, your behavior. Amen. And that goes right along with what he's teaching here. If we choose not to retain God in our knowledge, not to live according to the Word of God, the knowledge of God through faith in the cross of Jesus Christ, which is the only avenue that knowledge can come, then God will turn us over to that reprobate mind. Under the law, there's only a place of reprobate minds. And watch this, to do those things which are not convenient. See, you really don't get to choose the consequences. You don't get to choose, even though you think you do, you think you know what's convenient for you. But God is the author and the finisher of our faith. God is the creator. God is the one with the instruction. God is the one who can lead you in the path in which he's laid out for you in this life. He has given you. Amen. You didn't bring yourself here. Your daddy and mama didn't even bring you here. God, through them, brought you here. It's His plan for you. He fearfully and wonderfully created you. Praise be to God. So, we don't get to choose the consequences. We only get to choose who we will believe, what we will believe, who we will follow. And then we just get the consequences of that. And most of the time when we think this is convenient or that's convenient, it's not convenient because it's not the will of God. So we need to stick with the Word of God because the Word of God is convenient as the instructions of our lives that brings about the, the fruitful 
convenience in God's will. Amen? Watch this. Let's move on. We're going to list a whole lot of things right here. And if you're not careful, you'll start seeing a lot of this stuff is in the church today. Remember, this was written to the church. And the warning is there speaking of people who did not choose to retain God in their knowledge. You don't have to as a child of God. The Holy Spirit's not going to push you up against the wall, chain you down, and say you will think about Jesus today. You will get in the Word. No, He's going to tenderly direct you, but you don't have to go that direction. You can choose not to retain God in your knowledge. You can choose just to have the testimony in your sinful life. Well, you know, God knows my heart. Yes, He does. And our hearts show forth outwardly what's in them. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Verse 29, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, impla Im uh, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are wor worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now these things we see all up in the church. These things are the result of a lack of the message of the cross, a lack of true faith in the sacrifice of Christ that allows these works of the flesh to come in because under the law, not grace, these things don't exist, but under the law, the works of the flesh happen. Church splits, divorce, uh, Parents and, and, and sons and daughters taking each other to court, divorcing, all kind of ungodly worldly things in the church today because they've chosen not to retain God in their knowledge. Have you ever heard a Christian say, I know what the Bible says, but that's rebellion. That's choosing, I know I should be in church, but. I know I should be giving tithes and offering, but they, listen, they have chosen to allow their thinking to be exalted above the thinking of God. God's Word is what God thinks. Hallelujah. And so when, when we make up excuses as to why we're not being obedient, it's because we've chosen not to retain God in our knowledge. I'm not going to think. I'm not going to go the way God is directing me to go. I'm going to go the way I feel is, 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 is what God wants for me. No, we don't go by what we feel God wants for us. That's what's wrong in the big part, part of the spirit field church today. They, they think they, they're hearing from God and they just, well, I feel like this is from God. If it goes against the, the, the Word of God, it is not God. God's not going to say anything contrary to what He's already said. Watch this now. Watch this now. Here's where we enter into, we call it chapter 2, but it's, this was not written in chapter and verse. I need to say that occasionally because the chapter and verse was added just to help you and me find things more accurately. Uh, you know. So here we are rolling right on in chapter 2. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are that judges, because wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you that judge, do the same things. That's a pretty powerful statement. And this is the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul not telling the whole church in Rome that they're guilty of condemning others of these things. But he says, whosoever you are, if there's any among you that are condemning people for these things, you're guilty as well. That's why the Bible teaches. We're, Jesus taught in, in, in John 7, 24 that we're to judge righteous judgment, not condemning judgment, righteous judgment, the opportunity for salvation, forgiveness, deliverance according to God's Word. We don't go out and, and condemn people on the street and, 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 and just condemn them. No, we go out and, and we offer 
the message of the cross, which is God's way out of abomination, out of any sin, out of the dominion from under any sin, into a place of forgiveness and deliverance and refreshing and brand new life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when, when the church gets caught condemning those who are living in sin, the Bible here teaches that we're guilty of the same. When you're condemning someone of sin instead of offering them the way out of the condemnation that they were born into. Listen, they're not... People who are living in sin, it's because they, we were all born in sin. You just one day saw God showing you His mercy. And you accepted that mercy through faith in Jesus Christ and what He did for you at Calvary. And you received that grace that saved you by your faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Hallelujah. So then to turn around and begin to condemn people, that's, that's really playing the hypocrite. It's kind of like the prodigal son. We always talk about and focus on the prodigal son going off. And he is the main, I believe, focus of that story, how God will accept you back through a repentant heart. But I'm telling you, there was another part of that story, that older son who was uh, self-righteous and hypocritical and really wanted to be out there in the world himself and told, the, you've never given me a fatted calf. You've never done this for me and I've done that. Just go back and read that story about how self-righteous the, the, the older brother was and, and just hypocritical, you know, just living there. Yeah, he'd never gone out, but, his, but he was self-righteous just a hypocritical uh, attitude. And you know, you, you and I can fall into the place of a hypocrite very easy. Peter did it. You can read about it in Galatians chapter 2. Peter stepped into a place where he became a hypocrite. That's what the Bible, let's turn over there. I'll show you the word. You can look it up. I know you like to study the Bible, but the Bible here says in, uh, let me see if I can find this up. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. No, let's back up one verse. Or where is this at? Oh, where is this at? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Right here somewhere. Well, I can't find it. Let's get back over. Maybe it'll come to me in a minute. But I want you to go check it out. In chapter 2 of Galatians, it talks about uh, Peter leaving grace to go back under law when he feared the men coming from James's church, and he became the, the sin he committed was stepping into a place of the hypocrite. He was pretending to be something that he no longer was. See, the hypocrite can be either or way. It can be a lost person who's trying to live. And not trying to live, but he's trying to act like he's a Christian. It's like the Mormons claiming to be Christians. They're not Christians. Uh, it's like the people who uh, are got their faith and they think that the only way you can be born again, saved, and go to heaven is water baptism. They're hypocrites because you can't, you can't even live for God if you think water baptism is what saves you because the Holy Spirit won't work through that. He works through faith in the cross, not faith in your water baptism, unless your water baptism is after your born again experience. But anyway, the hypocrite can be the lost person trying to make people think he's a Christian. It can also be the Christian going back and living under law and putting out a hypocritical attitude and show to what, like Peter did. And he had to be rebuked by the Apostle Paul. Think about that. He says, in, ver in chapter 2, verse 1, though, that we are inexcusable. It's, it's, it's inexcusable for a child of God to go around condemning folk. We're to pray for them, we're to love them, and we're to give the gospel to them. We're not to spend days arguing with them. We're to give them the word of God. Not what we feel, not what we think. We're to give them what God says because what God says is what God thinks. And God doesn't change His thinking. 
God is a, our God, the God of the Bible, the God of all creation who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So things that were abomination to Him from the beginning are still an abomination to Him. What we do is we bring our sinful lives into the Bible and instead of being forgiven and delivered, we start twisting the word, writing whole new translations to adjust to our sinful abomination lifestyles, and that is exalting our thoughts above the Word of God. And that is what most of the new translations are about, removing things that we just quite, our flesh quite didn't want to go that direction. And so when we begin to remove uh, things from the Word of God and change the Word of God, we're, we're, we're walking in a dangerous place where the, 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 the warnings against that are horrible. The consequences for changing God's Word are horrible. The consequences for that are horrible, and uh, and that and that's what the Lord says. Uh, the, the 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 it will not be convenient for you and me if we change God's word, because God, His word is who He is. Mm. And when we try to change His word, it's because we're trying to change Him. And, and the root of trying to change God is because we've exalted our thoughts above. God, and we're no longer thinking soberly, back to Romans 12 and 3, but we're thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. And, 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 and what we've studied here, the end of chapter 1 in Romans and the beginning of chapter 2, it's not convenient. That means it's going to be horrible. When, when God says it's not convenient, you're talking about lifestyles that end up from being turned over to, to the reprobate mind that you're after because that's what's outside the knowledge of God is a reprobate mind. And the consequences of that are so devastating and such deception is there that when we go that way, we even begin believing that this is a move of God in my life. It's so deceptive. I have no doubt that in the days of Noah that there were other preachers, but they were not preachers of righteousness. I have no doubt there were many preachers, but they were not preaching righteousness. Any preacher of righteousness in Noah's day would have been preaching, there's a coming flood and there's a coming Redeemer. Hallelujah. But the preachers were not preaching that, only Noah. And I'm sure the, the people of that day were being told God loves us just like He loves them. Do you actually think that God that created the world and put us on it is going to flood it and get rid of us now? Hardly not, my son, my grandson. Don't believe the old man. You just stick with us. God's favor is on us too. We're not doing foolish things like building a boat and saying that God's going to save everybody but us. And, you know, and that's what's going on now. And all that talk comes from a mind that's been turned over to reprobation, if that's a word, to a place of being reprobate because they refuse to retain, keep, live by the knowledge of God. Think about that. Whoever you are that condemns other people, church, it's inexcusable. And when you are condemning, then you're guilty of the same things. Think about what the Bible is saying here. When we go out and we condemn, and a lot of preachers are condemning, people in their congregations, wearing them out with condemnation. They should just preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and let the Holy Spirit convict them when there's sin in their life. If they want to say, if they want to turn true conviction into condemnation in their minds and go home and quit coming to church, well, that's between them and God. But our ministry, our job, our function is to preach the simplicity of Christ, the gospel, the message of the cross, and the Holy Spirit will do all the rest. Praise be to God. But when we condemn, we're guilty of the same thing ourselves. Guilty of it. That's what the Bible says. Let me read it again. Verse 1, chapter 2, Romans. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are that judges. And that word means condemns. For wherein you condemn another, you condemn yourself. 
because you that condemn do the same things. He's letting us know the church is still not without sin occasionally. We're without the guilt of sin in the eyes of God. It's been washed away, the guilt, the shame. But there are times when we still sin. Don't get hooked up with ministers that say we don't sin. They misinterpret scriptures that may appear like it might mean that, but they don't mean that because reality, honesty says we sin. And when we sin, we have a faithful advocate with the Father, our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. When you get hooked up with people that say you don't even sin no more, that that's not you, then you might as well just go rob a bank or or do all the other things if it's not you. But I promise you, if you go rob a bank, it'll be you doing 40 years in jail. Oh, I guess that's not you in jail then. Oh, come on, that's so foolish. We need to get back to the knowledge of God. We need to retain the knowledge of God. We need to cling to the Word of God for it is the knowledge God offers us. We're to grow in the knowledge and the grace, what God will do through that knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Whether it be them out there committing these things or it be the church judging them. It is truth. According to truth that the judgment of God is against them. It is, it is the truth which is the judgment of God. Think about that. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the living Word. You need to just hold that thought. Jesus is the truth. God's Word is the truth. And Jesus is the living truth, the living Word of God. The Word made manifest among us. The Word of God was God. John 1 and 1, and the Word of God and the Word became flesh. The written Word of God must be seen through all of it, through the person and the work of Jesus Christ, or it's out of context. When we look at the world, if we see it, through the Word, which is looking through Christ and His sacrifice, we will understand the world, why it's in the shape it's in, why they're doing what they're doing. And we won't condemn them. We will remember that God did not condemn us, but He saved us. Hallelujah. And we will spend all our endeavors attempting to get that same gospel to them, not condemnation, but the gospel that removes the condemnation. But the Bible is very clear. It's the truth that is the judgment of God. It is the truth that is, that is the judgment of God. Let's read this again. But we are sure. Now what's written here? You must, your thinking must be according to this. When we read Scripture, people that sit around say, well, those are people who are not yet given to the Word. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe I need to get another translation. I don't... No, you just need to humbly accept the Word of God as God's direction, revealing who He is, what He's done, and how it can benefit you. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Amen. I was found in a lifestyle of not all these things we listed at the end of chapter 1, but many of them were in my life and I was living a life of sin. Amen. And I'm even talking about after I was born again because I did not know the way of the cross. I did not know the victory that was in the cross for me today. I thought all I was doing now was waiting on Jesus to come back and and He needs to hurry because there's no way I can stop living in sin. That's just the way it is now and everybody's doing it. And that's not 
retaining the knowledge of God in our minds that's making excuses. Even though it was true, I didn't know how to live for God, but then the message of the cross came and God began to teach me this is the answer. At the cross, I defeated all sin. Every issue that will ever rise up in your life your faith in the cross, the work of my son at the cross, you will find forgiveness, you will find deliverance, and you will find now a ministry of the New Testament where it's not a condemning, not using God's word as the letter of the law, but the letter of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Think about that. That is powerful, my friends. And, and uh, well, we're about out of time, and we are out of time, but I want to encourage you to tune in with us every week right here. Uh, sometime by lunch on Mondays, uh, I've added another teaching session to my YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. Avail yourself to those teachings. Get your Bible, pencil, paper. Write these things down. Study the Word of God. For if faith comes, it surely will come by hearing God's Word and hearing God's Word in its righteous context. And uh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for the church. I'm praying that they would get back on track, come back to the way of the cross. And it is happening even today. It is happening. And I just want to encourage you, just keep studying the Word of God. Keep crying out to God. Keep asking God for a greater revelation of Jesus and, and to, to walk in a place where you're determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified and that you will be found only glorying in the cross, Galatians 6.14. We march on, and until next time, stay determined.